All right, all the three that we're going to cover are cubic cells. Um, and so as the word implies, they're all cubes. Um, and we want to be able to draw them. So be able to draw these cubes. Um, the best way to draw a cube is just draw a square, draw an offset square, and then combine the corners with some straight lines. And boom, you've got a cube, which will be our unit cells. Um, so the first one is simple cubic. And what this is, it's basically just a cube with one atom at each corner of our unit cell. So we're going to draw a square, draw an offset square, and then combine all of the corners. And then for simple cubic, there's just one on each of the corners. And you want to be able to draw this. And so we can think about uh, different properties of this cubic cell that would allow us to kind of determine what a, a compound is or different properties of the compound. We think about how many atoms there are per cell. Um, if we think about it, we have eight atoms in here, or at least part of eight atoms. If you think about it right, we have one on each corner, that's eight corners. But if you think about it, only they're each only one eighth of the way in. And so eight times one eighth is only one atom per cell. So there's only really one atom inside the cell because of a lot of atoms, most of the atom isn't actually inside the cell. And note that these drawings aren't to scale. Um, in real life, they kind of fill out as much as possible. So kind of this two-dimensional image is more so what it looks like. Then another thing that's kind of important for the unit cell is the edge length. In this case, the edge length of our simple cubic cell is just equal to 2R where R is the radius of your compound. The radius of our atom. Uh, simple cubic is the least packing efficient. So it has the smallest packing efficiency. And that just means that there's a lot of uh, empty space, space in here that's really not being used for anything. Um, the actual number is like 52% of the space is occupied. You don't have to know the number, um, just know that it's the least efficient. And then finally, the last thing we want to know is the coordination number. And the coordination number is just the number of atoms each atom is touching. So if we were to draw our unit cell again, and we were to kind of pick one of these uh, orange circles and think about how many other uh, atoms it's touching. Well, we can see instantly that on this same cube, it's going to be touching one, two, three of these atoms. But of course, this is a three-dimensional structure, so there's cubes on top of there. There's going to be another atom coming over here, one going into the back, and then kind of one coming out of the side. And you can Google better pictures than these if you'd like for a total of six different atoms that's touching. So the coordination number is equal to six. Again, check out your book or the internet for some better figures, but be able to draw these um, unit cells, all of them, not just this one.